So I'm a leader. I'm a leader of leaders, Jeff, and I'm doing the self-care things. I'm recognizing I'm maybe I'm getting some better sleep and I'm sitting, you know, maybe we're back in the office. Maybe we aren't, but this could be viewed in a year, two years, whatever it looks like. And, and, and a, a teammate or somebody who works on your team walks in the office, they close the door and they're like, boss, I'm done. Like I am struggling. Like I am tired. I think I'm depressed. You know, I don't want to use the word depressed, but I feel like really burned out. I got a shitty situation at, at home. My kids are doing bad at school. And like I, I have nowhere else to turn. What are, what as a leader, one who genuinely cares about the folks, where, what can I do? Or what are some principles that I should maybe not do or you know, yeah. do no harm or anything like that, Jeff? What guidance would you give there? Sure. Well, there's two things. I think the real nature of a leader is the type of leader you are in a crisis. But I think that there's another type of leader, which is what we call a grief leader, which is the type of leader that, spe that leads from emotions as well, that isn't afraid to be open to other emotions, but also express their emotions to show their humanity that, that, that they are um, just as human as the people that they are leading. And it's creating that empathetic relationship. I, I think that, um, you know, th there's sort of generations and, and maybe, maybe we're moving out of it that sort of says to, you know, to, to ask for help is a weakness, to express some sort of um, emotion is a vulnerability. And, and, you know, those things kill people. Those attitudes kill people. It stops people from reaching out. It stops people from connecting to their supports. It stops people from really understanding that, you know, we're more alike than different. And to make, to, to, to not know how to respond to a person who is in a crisis, we can all relate to that. And being able to just give that empathetic ear, and I, what I would say is just an unwavering support, you know, being able to say, what do you need? Being able to not tell the person what to do, but really help the person understand that uh, they have the capacity to know what to do, that um, they are really able to um, solve this problem for themselves. Maybe they just need some time, some encouragement, some support. But you know, when people are going through stress, crisis and, and stressful times, you know what they need? They need hope. Number one, they need hope. And if a leader can give them hope, wait, I've been through stressful times too, and I made it through. I'm sure you'll make it through too. The second thing is, I, I think they really need to have a sense of, of connection, uh, that somebody, you know, understands what they're going through. Um, I, I think also, that encouragement and instilling that, you know, they can solve this for themselves. They may not see it right now, but they are the, the, they are the best person to, to address this problem. I, I can't think of anything more encouraging that a leader could say than, you know, I've got confidence that you can do this. And by the way, this isn't a weakness. I'm glad that you reached out and, um, you know, not to diminish what you're going through, but we've all been through difficult times and let us know what you need. And be, be somewhat flexible. Um, you know, what, what do they say that um, to replace a professional is about seven years of salary? When you lose that, it's one of the most valuable pieces of, of if you want to think, uh, equipment that you have. But isn't it amazing that in, in some industries we pay more attention to shining the equipment than we actually put into um, really helping support the most vulnerable or the most valuable asset, which is which is the the employee. So the biggest thing I could say to a leader that that um, that, that says that is push through your discomfort if you're not comfortable with people emoting. Second of all, model from an example, make it pe feel pe people feel safe that um, that they can come to you without judgment, and then encourage them to find the way to to work through this and be there to support those, you know, those are the words of encouragement from a, a selfish perspective as well for for leaders if you want to create a connection with a teammate or a, an employee that lasts for life you help them through those yeah. difficult times and 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 uh, you know speaking of vulnerability mid-20s uh had a stillborn birth and you know happened very rapidly and all these other things mid-20s absolutely zero awareness of how to handle the complexities of and, and i remember luckily my brain shut down for most of it i just remember certain pockets over that you know yeah. those those periods of time there but you know i remember thinking to myself picking out you know, a, a casket and thinking, you know what, that's just, that's fucked up. Like, there's no way I should be doing this right now. Here's my point. 
I was working full time and my boss, Jan Pedler, this was, you know, over 20 years ago. She sent me flowers and she said, take off as much time as you need. And she said, you're just so you know, this is what you're entitled to, but don't worry. If we need to get you more time, we'll go right to the F and CEO. I don't want to hear anything more about it. That's 20, 20 some years ago, Jeff. And I remember that distinctly yeah. and I will go to the, through the wall with her, you know, if she ever asked me to. And so it's a real opportunity, you know, to, to create a connection and a bond and to, and to really tell people that and demonstrate that you care and not to minimize it as well. Right. That's the other thing. Ah, you know what? It's okay. Just get some good sleep, get some sleep. I heard yeah. Jeff and Daryl talk about it, get an aura ring and read that book and you know, yeah. you should be good there. So, or take think, some time off because you're making me uncomfortable. <laughs> yes. You, know, get, yeah. you, you go deal with that. Go deal with that over there. Uh, don't come into the office type thing because the leader's uncomfortable. You know, there's two types of leaders. There's leaders that focus on the task and there's people that folk, there's leaders that focus on relationships. And I think that what you're saying is the, the, the leaders that focus on relationships are the one that you remember. And, and as you were talking about that, I remember when I was sort of in the, the sort of like corporate before I became a psychologist and, um, you know, somebody that I worked with that I didn't know very well sort of reached out and said, hey, you're not yourself. What's going on? And yeah, I was going through a difficult time. And uh, she took me aside and said, here, I'm going to give you the number of somebody. I want you to phone them and I want you to promise me that you'll phone them. And you can share with me afterwards what you did, but tell you what, I went and saw this person. I was going through a difficult time. This person saved my life. And I, I just recognize in you that maybe you, you, you need some, you know, somebody to talk to. Um, well, you know, uh, amazingly, that person connected me to somebody who became my mentor in psychology and uh, sort of coached and guided me through. And that's where I sort of got that taste for, you know, okay, wait a second, there's somebody within a business that recognized something because they went through. I don't know that I would have ever made the call. I don't know that I, I didn't even reach out for help. But the fact that somebody just recognized that I wasn't myself, cared enough to pull me aside and cared enough to say, I don't need to know what you're going through, but just to know we've all been through stuff and here's what I found helpful. And if this doesn't work, come back and we'll find something else. And I still remember who that is. And, um, you know, you know, just uh, amazingly that, you know, that, that degree of compassion, but that is a relationship leader right there. She could have said, I haven't got time for this. We've got tasks to do whatever else, but now there wasn't anything more important than sort of the, the, the people that, that, you know, worked for that, for her. And I think it brings up another point too, as leaders task versus relationship, your responsibility morally and professionally is to be looking out for people and paying attention, not just are they getting the deliverables done on time, but is there something else that that's, that's happening during meetings and whatnot? Cause I would submit that that individual, if she wasn't paying attention, if she didn't care, if she didn't value you, she yeah. never would have taken the time to even notice and also taken the time to, to reach out. And I think that as leaders, again, this is a people business, no matter if you're building widgets, you're responding to, to, to disasters or it's ultimately a relationship human business and one other point and then we'll move on jeff too um you know i was in uh in the yukon for floods response and you know we even talked about it as a group you know everyone's struggling the the energy normally when we deploy it we're upbeat we're excited to see each other again it's you know we're, we're i work with amazing people but we were just so done so we talked about it and and an audience that literally would do anything to help one another. And yet we don't reach out to each other. You know, it, it's really interesting because we talked about it, Jeff, and you've had these conversations and, and yeah. we're talking, we're marble slab, white, white horse. And I said, Hey, you know what? Who, who here would not drive to Edmonton at 2 AM in the morning to come and help? Everyone's like F man. Like we were zero issues. We would do it. And yet we didn't, you know, we don't reach out, but I say that to say this, Jeff, later on in that same deployment, I was done. Like I was, you talk about hair trigger temper and all that. I was just getting tired of people's voices, let alone even, and, and we're together all the time and all these other things. And so it was a Thursday on a longer deployment and I, we're all going out for supper. And I just texted one of, you know, our boss <clears throat> and I said, I'm out. I'm just going to take a break tonight. I'm not going out for supper or whatever. And, um, he replied back, you good? I'm like, yeah, it's fine. And you know, I, I, pre I just need some time. And I'll tell you out of the eight people that were there, all eight texted me within a few minutes. You good? You good? 
Do you want anything? Do you? And, and it was unconditional. And it really showed me and reinforced the fact that people do care. They really, really do care. No one wants to see somebody suffer. I, I would submit maybe a few ex-girlfriends or ex-wives, but that's a whole <laughs> different conversation. But, but you're actually in a, in a weird way, you're depriving people of the opportunity to be of service to help you because that actually helps us feel good too, helping yeah. other individuals. So kind of we're, we're depriving them of that, of that opportunity. So, you know, I'm, I'm just well, yeah, curious. You know, this is, yeah, you know, this is a huge issue. So, um, you know, when you have a big organization and maybe you have an HR department or a disability management, somebody goes off, they submit a note saying, hey, you know, this person isn't coming back for three months. Uh, one, and I work for, I, I do treatment for insurance companies for um, all sorts of different organizations, large and small. Number one stressor is that person is off and they come back and say, haven't heard from anybody from work. Nobody even cares. It's like they don't even notice me. They don't even value me. And then when I go to the organization and say, hey, why didn't you reach out? Oh, well, we, we, we thought that was, that would be harassment. We thought that we weren't allowed to. And I'm like, w where, where did you get that from? Well, that, that's our policy. Or, and I'm like, show it to me. Well, well that's being our policy. And, and you know, the, the relationship doesn't just stop or start when the person's in the office. If that, per if that relationship is important to you, it means that, that that relationship is when the person is there or not there. And you know, the, a, 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 a leader, a relationship leader, should make it part of their, their routine to check in on people who aren't there for whatever reason. Not to say, why aren't you here? But to say, hey, thinking of you, what do you need? And there's amazing ways that you can do it through e-cards or flowers or whatever, whatever it is. There's a way to be non-intrusive about it, especially in this day and age of communication. I had a client um, who was off and, and um, from the teaching world, actually, and, and talk about a, you know, a profession under stress right now, amongst others, um, who, again, just went off. And, and the teachers got together and signed a card and had somebody drop it off in her mailbox. And she said, oh my God, like, I didn't even know that they knew that I was gone. Um, because everybody's coping with it, and, and that meant so much. And that was that was a leader that sort of said, "Hey, we're going to do this because we know this person is really struggling." And 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 as for you, you will never forget that that was done for you, that recognized you. So what I would recommend is, you know, this whole idea of you know connection is such an important part of our physical and mental health. Where we're creatures of that need to be touched and nurtured and 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 be around. I mean, you know, we we really are social animals. Why is it that when somebody isn't well that we sort of isolate them and put them off and say that we can't talk to them for some ridiculous reason? Um, no, that's when we should be talking to them. And uh, I, I just don't know why that doesn't happen. There's no good excuse yet, despite the fact that when I ask, I'm given a hundred excuses, none of them valid from either a legislative, legal, medical, or social reason. I absolutely love that. And part of it, too, is the awkwardness around it. Do you, you, you talked about it a bit earlier. Like, if I, don't, if I don't look, then I don't have to you know, deal with this train wreck of an issue. And, uh, but I, I think it also speaks to the, the responsibility of leaders to know what those supports are organizationally as well. It's not good enough to say, yeah, I think we have an EFAP program. I don't know if we do or not. But and it may let, not be good enough me. just to have an EFAP program. True story. Yep. True story. Yeah.